This is Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia's plan to build the tallest building on Earth. Rising 1,000 meters into the sky, it was designed to stand nearly 200 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. It was supposed to anchor a brand new district on the Red Sea, with luxury hotels, apartments, and the highest observation deck ever built. But more than a decade later, the project is still unfinished, far from the record-breaking vision that Saudi Arabia once promised. Jeddah Tower was not just a skyscraper, but a statement, a declaration that Saudi Arabia could rival Dubai on the world stage. In 2010, when Dubai completed the Burj Khalifa, it instantly became a global icon. At 800 meters tall, it wasn't just a building, but a symbol of Dubai's ambition to transform itself from a desert trading hub into a global capital of tourism and finance. Saudi Arabia, despite its immense oil wealth, lacked that same prestige. Jeddah, the kingdom's second largest city, sits on the Red Sea about 850 kilometers west of Riyadh. Known as the gateway to Mecca, it has long been a commercial hub, but lacked the global prestige of Dubai. Jeddah Tower was meant to change that. Behind the plan was Prince Alawid, a billionaire investor and chairman of Kingdom Holding Company. He imagined an entire master planned city called Kingdom City, five square kilometers of luxury residences, office towers, and entertainment venues. At the center would stand Jeddah Tower, originally called Kingdom Tower, the first building in human history to cross the 1,000 meter mark. The specifications were extraordinary. More than 160 floors, over half a million square meters of interior space, 59 elevators, and tens of thousands of tons of steel. The estimated cost of the project exceeded $20 billion. The foundation alone required piles driven more than 100 meters into the ground to anchor the structure against shifting sands and corrosive coastal conditions. It wasn't just designed to be tall, but to make a statement that Saudi Arabia would define the future of skylines. To put this height in perspective, the Empire State Building is 381 meters tall. The Eiffel Tower is 330 meters. Even the Burj Khalifa, which already dwarfs most of the world's skylines, would have been nearly 200 meters shorter. If completed, Jeddah Tower would have been visible from dozens of kilometers away, dominating the horizon in a way many have never seen before. Construction began in 2013, with the Saudi Bin Laden Group as the primary contractor. By 2014, the massive foundation had been poured, and cranes began raising the vertical core. Within a few years, the structure had reached about 20 floors, rendering circulated across the international media, and for a brief moment, it appeared that the new tallest building in the world was finally on its way. But financing such a project was always precarious. When oil prices collapsed in 2014, Saudi Arabia's government revenues fell dramatically. Money that once flowed freely into real estate projects began to dry up. International investors were hesitant to commit billions of dollars to an unproven district in Jeddah. As a result, financing the tower became more complicated by the year. Then in 2017 came political turmoil. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman launched an anti-corruption purge that saw dozens of prominent figures arrested, including Prince Alawid himself. He was detained at the Ritz-Carlton in Riyadh, and for months, the project lost its most influential backer. In the time afterward, progress slowed to almost nothing. When the pandemic struck in 2020, work had essentially stopped completely. The cranes were dismantled and workers had left the site for good. What had once been announced as the tallest building in history was now a deserted construction site. Drone footage revealed a lonely stump of reinforced concrete, rising only a fraction of its intended height. The land around it, once envisioned as a glittering financial district, remained mostly barren. What was meant to be Saudi Arabia's answer to Dubai was now a little more than an unfinished core in the desert. But to understand Jeddah Tower, you can't stop at the construction delays. The design itself reveals why this building was so difficult to realize. The tower's footprint was shaped like a Y, with three wings radiating from a central core. This geometry distributed the weight of the structure, while giving interior spaces maximum access to natural light and Red Sea views. The central spine was engineered as a massive vertical backbone, rising uninterrupted for hundreds of meters. As the tower climbed higher, it narrowed into a sleek spire. The elevators posed yet another unprecedented challenge. Conventional elevator systems struggle beyond 500 meters. The Jeddah Tower needed to nearly double that. Plans called for double-deck high-speed elevators, moving at 10 meters per second. At around 660 meters, developers planned the world's highest observation deck, 
200 meters higher than Dubai's. Visitors would stand at a height greater than most mountain peaks, able to see far across the desert and the Red Sea. Above that, an open-air sky terrace was designed into the spire, a platform so exposed that standing on it would feel like hovering in the atmosphere itself. But achieving these experiences came at an immense cost in engineering. The material requirements were staggering. Over 80,000 tons of structural steel, millions of cubic meters of high-strength concrete, and specialized glass panels able to resist sandstorms, heat, and hurricane-force winds. To actually construct the tower, cranes taller than any ever assembled before had to be deployed. Yet all of these ambitions amplified its weakness. As time went on, the project grew more expensive, more complex, and far less certain. Unlike Dubai, Jeddah lacked a global tourism brand or a critical mass of international business. Filling half a million square meters of ultra-luxury space in a secondary city always carried risks. In 2016, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman unveiled Vision 2030, a sweeping reform program designed to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy away from oil. Vision 2030 fundamentally reshaped the kingdom's development priorities. Instead of channeling prestige into a single tower in Jeddah, the government shifted its focus to a portfolio of large-scale projects, each designed to capture international attention. Neom, a $1 trillion futuristic development on the Gulf, became the centerpiece. Within it, the line was unveiled as a 170-kilometer mirrored city, promising to revolutionize urban life. Alongside Trojena, a year-round mountain resort, and Oxagon, a floating industrial hub on the Red Sea. Against these monumental ventures, Jeddah Tower began to look more like an afterthought. What had once been envisioned as Saudi Arabia's boldest statement now risked being overshadowed by newer, more futuristic visions. Some began to describe Jetta Tower as a casualty of Vision 2030, and the reason was simple. Completing a single skyscraper at an enormous cost delivered little compared to the transformative promise of Neom or the Line. Why commit billions to finishing Jetta Tower when the government was already rebranding the entire nation through projects that stretched across various regions? But Jetta Tower wasn't just competing with its own delays. It had ignited an international race to claim the title for the world's tallest building. When Dubai saw that Jeddah Tower was rising, it responded with its own plan, the Dubai Creek Tower. Announced in 2016, Creek Tower was projected to reach 1,300 meters, tall enough to surpass Jeddah Tower and secure Dubai's dominance once again. Ground was broken on the project and a massive foundation was poured, but Creek Tower never rose above its foundations. Construction slowed after the pandemic and cost estimates continued to climb. Taken together, the picture is clear. What began as a race for the tallest building in the world has slowed and in many places stopped entirely. The fate of Jeddah Tower is still uncertain, 